Hey folks, I'm Carol and welcome to Over 50 So What? Have you tried doing something different today? Like maybe cleaning your teeth with your left hand or the other hand? Even something as simple as that is great for your brain fitness. And learning new information, which is what this show is all about. Today, Pauline and Andrew are going to share with us some fantastic tips on how we can be more welcoming to the LGBTI community, whether it's your friends and family over 50 or your children and grandchildren. So you know, I am a bit of a disco dancer from way back. Today's routine has a bit of a disco flavour. Just get on your feet and join in with us. And lastly, we're going to a camp for the 55 plus. And we're going to learn about the global sensation, which is geocaching, a modern form of treasure hunt using a GPS device. On this show, we like to cover topics for a diverse range of older Australians. We have those that are working full-time, part-time or fully retired. We have people living independently in their own homes, in retirement communities and in aged care. And we cover a broad range of cultural backgrounds. Well today we're going to look at an often neglected sector, our older LGBTI community. We welcome Pauline Cremieri and Andrew Rogers from Vales Aging and Aged Care. This is a program of Rainbow Health Australia, an Australian research centre in sex, health and society at La Trobe University. Hi Pauline and Andrew, welcome to Over 50 So What? Hi Carol, Hi, thanks Carol. for having us. We're really excited to be here. I'm very excited to have you on the show to really help, uh, you know, elucidate what's happening with the LGBTI older community and to kick off with uh, there's a lot of people watching who'll be going what is LGBTI and there's a Q or a plus or what do the letters stand for and what's the best way to refer to this community? For older people we use LGBTI which is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and people who have an intersex or bodily variation. Some people use Q, some organisations use Q, which stands for queer. The A stands for a romantic, asexual. The plus indicates that there's a whole variety of sexuality and gender identities that don't kind of fit the traditional boxes. We in the older space use LGBTI because older people have a sensitivity around the use of the Q or the queer word which was always a term of discrimination, vilification and abuse to them. We don't use Q. It's also the acronym that government mm. have used up until um, fairly recently, but certainly in the ageing and aged care space. Well, fantastic. Thanks for that clarification, because I think a lot of people are really confused. Uh, now, they'll also notice people watching that there might be she, he, him, her, uh, after your name on the screen and commonly now you see that more on people's emails sometimes they them can you explain how this is helpful how it's come about one of the things that the use of pronouns does is it supports an individual's own sense of identity we know that gender which was traditionally male or female there's a spectrum of gender identities and the use of our pronouns is a way of supporting the notion that when we first meet somebody, we don't necessarily know their gender. You know, they might present with a deep voice on the telephone and you think, ah, oh, that's a man, but that may not necessarily be the case. So using pronouns is a way of saying, I understand that gender identity exists more broadly than just male and female, and I want to respect your identity. And in that sense, it creates a sense of safety for somebody who is transgender or somebody who is gender diverse. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that um, by us all using our pronouns, you know, on a screen or in our emails or wearing a badge, it's a way of um, 
ensuring people don't have to make assumptions. Mm. It also really uh, sends a message of welcome. Now, you're both wearing lovely T-shirts saying Val's LGBTI ageing and aged care. Thanks for puffing out your chest there, Andrew. Can you explain what do you do at VELS? VELS is the ageing program, the ageing and aged care program at Rainbow Health Australia, which is part of the Australian Research Centre in Sex, Health and Society at La Trobe University. So it was one of the first research programs that um, really established um, a, a body of work to really help us understand what the experiences are of older LGBTI people. The VELS works with service providers in the ageing and aged care space to build their knowledge and awareness to be LGBTI safe, welcoming and inclusive. But I think we're also really passionate about empowering older LGBTI people to understand the service sector, to access services so that they can stay connected um, and part of the community as they age. And Andrew, maybe I'll get you to talk about who Val Eastwood was. We're named after an icon of the LGBTI community who in the 1950s ran a cafe in Swanston Street opposite the Melbourne Town Hall. Her name was Val Eastwood. And the place that she created was a place known to attract a crowd of Melbourne's misfits, of people who were camp and theatrical, was the phrase that was used to describe the people who went to Vows. And what it was, really, was a safe haven from the rest of the world, a place where people could go, interact with others from you know, what we now call the community, interact with other gay men, other lesbians, other bisexual and transgender folk, to feel comfortable and safe in an environment and just socialise. So the work that we do at Val's kind of picks up Val Eastwood's theme and wants to honour that by creating places and working with service providers to create places of safety where people can just be themselves. When we do this work, it's not just for the LGBTI community, but we know from the people that we talk to, that there are many people who have children and grandchildren who are accessing aged care. And sometimes they don't feel safe in those situations talking about their children or their grandchildren because they fear that the other people around them will actually pity them or patronise them about having a child who is gay or lesbian, bisexual or transgender or has an intersex variation. So for, for your audience, you know, I, I think it's important that they think about who else, not just the people in the community, but they all have families. So, you know, we want people to be able to live safe and authentic lives where their lives are celebrated as well. An older gay couple I know who went to a family wedding. Everybody was up dancing. Now, this couple have been together 40 years, but they couldn't, they didn't feel comfortable in dancing together. How would it feel not to dance with your significant other at a family event? That's the kind of thing, the little, the small, that can really impact on somebody. And so how do you go about changing that kind of uh, family messaging or group club messaging that says it is okay to get up and dance together? To finish off with, can you just give some words of encouragement to our viewers watching today who are older lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans or intersex people. You're fabulous. You have <laughs> rights and you can access services, hopefully with confidence. And we really encourage you, if you want more information, to contact us. It's also important to tell services what you want, what you need to support you. They are, they're required to provide safe and inclusive services to everyone, and that includes older, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender and intersex Australians. And I would be saying too to older, lesbian, gay, bisexual, trans and intersex folk, ask the younger people of the community how they are supporting and helping older people. The, the final thing I would say is, I know from the work that I've been doing at Bowles over the last three years, 
that there is a lot being done in the ageing and aged care space. Mainstream service providers are required under the legislation to take into account the needs and interests of older LGBTI. Yeah, and there are a lot of great organisations and we're more than happy to help you access that information and support. Thank you both for coming on the show and just shining a light on this whole area. And we look forward to seeing you again to discuss some other things like the rainbow tick. Fantastic. Great. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, Carol.
Okay, two steps. One, two. One, two, and just go. When was the last time you went camping? Was it 30 years ago, 40 years ago? Have you never been camping? Well, have we got an experience for you on the show today? This is a camp for the over 55. So this is camping. So you get to actually stay in a building, sleep in a proper bed, and you get this most amazing view and fantastic activities. So can't wait to show you what we're gonna do at camp. It's basically a scavenger hunt using a GPS. So you can buy a little device like this, or if you have a smartphone, you can download a geocaching app onto your phone and use that as a GPS as well. What people do is they go out onto public areas, so national parks, playgrounds, all that sort of thing, a national monument, and they hide a container of some sort. And it can vary in size from something as small as your thumbnail all the way up to something as large as this black container here. Then what they do is they upload the coordinates of where that container is hidden. If the container is big enough, it will have little toys or trinkets that people have taken out with them. And the idea is you put a toy or trinket in the container and then you take something else out of someone else's. That toy that you found in that container, you would then put in the next container that you find. So that little, you might take out a little toy teddy bear so that little toy teddy bear ends up travelling all the way around Victoria, Australia, all the way around the world. Now the most important part with this activity is you put it back exactly where you found it. That means cache number two is approximately 50 metres away. Alright? Obviously that's telling you which direction you need to walk. You need to roll the dice. That's going to be the number you're going to start at. Then after that, you can go to wherever number you would like. And yep. Same time. Wow! You went the furthest. No, no, it was 
great fun. You laugh all the time. You just have fun with like-minded people. It's wonderful. So what activities have you done today? Well, we've done the flying fox, the geocaching, I think it's called. That was great fun. And uh, swimming. Oh, well, not swimming. Paddle, paddle boarding. Kayaking is my absolute favourite. And Catherine, right. now your first time. How was it your first time? It's awesome. It's really awesome. I Victor. don't know what they're missing. Do it now, don't wait for later on. What would you say to somebody who's never been on a camp before? They don't even realise that you don't even have to sleep on the floor. You can actually sleep on a mattress and you get food cooked for you. You don't have to cook your own food on the fire. So uh, what would you say to someone sitting at home about who's never ever been to a, a camp before? Just, just try it. That's, that's it. It's all you can, you, what are you losing? Two days. And it's just so much fun. And you, even if you don't partake in all the activities, you just meet some awesome people and hear some awesome stories. And it's just, it's just, I don't know, it's just inspiring. Thanks for watching today. We'd love to hear your comments and your ideas. Please join our Facebook group, Over 50 So What? And if you'd like more information on Vels, LGBTI ageing and aged care, or the rainbow tick, just go to our website, carolohalloran.com. Now it's great to get out in nature, whether it's kayaking or walking or cycling, or maybe even geocaching. If you'd like more information on great getaways, camps for 55 plus, just go to the website, carolohalloran.com. Please subscribe to YouTube, Over 50 So What, plenty of replays and fitness videos. Now, get out of the house, go meet some friends or make some new friends. Keep active, keep connected. Over 50 So What. I'm Carol, yours in disco always. our TV show. Be sure to hit subscribe and then you'll never miss an episode. Jump on Facebook, join our group, get in on the fun, fitness, wellness and inspiration. I'm Carol, over 50, so what? <laughs>